Welcome back to part two of installing a lift on our JL. So I know that ending the first video the way I did might have been a little frustrating, but the reason I chose to do that um, was because I was looking at the comparison of the coil springs that are going to be replaced on the front end. And I decided that I wanted to make this a little bit easier and show you guys a trick. So last night I had actually run into town and picked up a portable coil spring compressor. So if you don't have one of these, it's really not a bad idea. We use them at the shop all the time. Um, they're like 40 bucks and they're super easy to use. So that being said, welcome to part two, where we're going to work on the front end of our JL. Now, like I had mentioned at the beginning of the last video, um, we started with the rear because the rear is very simple. There's only three components on each side that need to be replaced, plus adding a bump stop. The front end gets a lot more technical. Now, it's not any more difficult, but it does get a lot more technical. So we're going to take our time, go through getting the rest of the suspension installed on the front end, and then we'll take it out for a shakedown run and see how she handles. So what do you say? Let's get started. All right, so just like the rear end, you wanna make sure that you support the Jeep by the frame. Do not put the jack stands underneath the axle, the control arms, or any of the moving steering or suspension parts as we need the front end to be fully relaxed. So we had talked about the front end being more technical. It's not any more difficult. It's the same steps. We're gonna be replacing the coil spring, we're going to be replacing the shock and this little sway bar end link at the end of our sway bar up here. Those are the three components that we're replacing to accomplish the lift. However, the reason why it's more technical is due to the steering system. You've got your knuckle right here, which gives you a lot less space to be able to swing this uh, coil spring out and in. And you'll notice on the front end, the bump stop is actually inside the coil spring. Believe me, this actually makes it a little bit more difficult. In addition, in order to get this to relax, on the rear end, all we had to do was disconnect the shock on the sway bar, and the whole rear end would drop right down because that was the only thing holding it up. Up front, we're also going to have to disconnect the drag link on the steering in order to get this to fully relax. And in addition, you want to keep an eye on your brake lines. Your front brake lines, because of the steering system, are routed further in. They're also bolted directly to the axle so that they could run underneath your shock and up to your brake caliper. That being said, when you go to relax this down to put the new spring in, you don't want to overstretch your brake lines. So there's a lot more to look out for on the front end. But we're going to take it step by step, and we're going to go ahead, disconnect the components that are holding the axle up, get the old parts out of here and see what we can do about getting the new parts in. All right, so like I said, to get everything disconnected, relatively simple. It's just those three components. So now we've got the axle pretty much free. And as you can see, she's still got a little bit of movement and it's relaxed underneath the Jeep. So the first thing you want to put in is the coil spring. Now, I had mentioned at the beginning of this video that I ran into town last night to get a coil spring compressor. I didn't think about it when I first started this yesterday, um, but it definitely comes in handy for the front end. Again, the bump stop for your suspension travel up front is inside of the coil spring. So in order to get your lifted coil spring to make this swing to get up in here, you're gonna wanna compress it as much as possible. In addition, when we did the rear end, we pointed out that we put the bump stop in last or the bump stop extension in last. And Jeep made that super easy for us. Well, on the front end, it's not gonna be quite that easy. So the bump stop for the front end 
is basically looks like a hockey puck. Now this hockey puck needs to go right here again inside of your coil spring. So now you're actually making the distance that this coil spring needs to spin even smaller. Now here's my recommendation. I do not recommend bolting this down before you put the coil spring in. It's a little more difficult to do it after the fact, but it's going to make putting the coil spring in a hell of a lot easier. So the provided hardware that comes with it is simply a bolt and a nut. The bolt goes straight through the center and there is already a pre-drilled hole in your axle from Chrysler in order to set that in. And it will just set into place. But we want it to be free moving so that if we have to move it out of the way while we are trying to put the coil spring in, we can. Once the coil spring is set in place, you're going to want to unbolt your brake line from the front so that you can gain access up underneath to put your fingers in there in order to screw the nut at the bottom of the bolt that goes through the center of this. Now, the top of the bolt usually is an Allen head, and they do that to make it a little simpler for you. Um, an Allen wrench is smaller and easier to get inside the coil spring in order to attach this down. It's a hex nut underneath, so if you have a ratcheting wrench, it'll come in real handy in order to be able to tighten that down. We're going to get to that as tightening this is still going to be the last step because we got to install the sway bar and link and the shock as well. So let me go ahead, get the front spring compressed and get it set in place so that we can start reassembling this corner. Okay, so you can see the comparison difference. This is the coil spring that came out. This is the factory Rubicon spring. This is the coil spring that's going in there. Now, this came out nice and easy at this length with the way that this setup is. So we want to compress this spring down to be minimum of this length, if not a little bit smaller, so that we can make it easier to put it in. So portable coil spring compressors, like I said, pick this up for 40 bucks at O'Reilly's. They're easy to use, but I am going to give you a word of caution. When you start compressing this spring, you are putting a lot of tension on it. You need to take your time and make sure that this thing is set appropriately. If it were to slip or to let go while your hands are on it or it's anywhere near you, this thing with the pressure that it has could launch this basically as a missile across your shop and hurt you, yourself, or the Jeep itself so take your time and make sure that you get it right now when we go to compress it you'll notice i've got both springs upside down this is the part like we had mentioned in the last video that is your dual rate this is going to go towards the upper side of um the spring mount this goes on the axle you're not going to be able to get a whole lot of compression out of this these are already compressed so the coil spring compressor we are going to put from up here to about here, and we're going to shrink this thing down. So let's see how much we can get this to match this size. As you can see, we got it pretty damn close to where the factory is. You don't want to put a ridiculous amount of tension on this and you want to make sure that the bolts do not exceed the actual length of the spring because believe me that's going to make it even just as more difficult to put it in so instead of being this tall we're now about this tall should be a little easier to get in once it's set in place then we just slowly release the tension off of the coil spring compressors and she'll set right in the axle where it's supposed to go so let's see if this is enough now let's get it installed.
just like that, we've got the coil spring set into place. Now, one thing I am going to point out, the foot on the axle where it sits and the foot up top where it sits is grooved and notched out to fit where the end of the coil spring is. So you might have to twist the spring just a little bit to get it to seat properly into place. If you don't seat it properly, um, then upon usage, you might hear it squeak quite a bit because the coil spring is, is trying to move around and get to where it's supposed to be seated. And on top of that, because twisting it could affect its little bit of height, you could have a situation where she pulls one way or another. So take the extra minute, make sure she's seated properly in the foot. Now you'll notice that our bump stop is free to move around on the inside. Like I said, that's near the end of what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get to that in just a few minutes. Now we're gonna put the floor jack back up underneath it. We're gonna lift it up. We're gonna attach the shock and the new sway bar end link. And then this corner is actually done. All right, so I took the liberty of going ahead and doing the other side of the Jeep. It's pretty much the exact same process as what we did on the previous corner. And again, we're replacing just the shock, the coil spring, the sway bar end link, and you gotta make sure that the bump stop extension is secured on the inside. So this is now where we're gonna get technical on the front end. By raising the Jeep, or also known as lowering this axle, by about two, two and a half inches, you are actually going to severely affect the steering system. Once the lift is complete and everything is together, 100% of the time, it needs to go to an alignment shop and it needs to get an alignment done. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a trick on how to get it damn close before you go and drive it away. Because if we just put the wheels back on it right now and go and drive it, the steering wheel itself is probably going to be about a 90 to 120 degrees off center, which is going to cause your ABS to go nuts, your traction control to go nuts, and a bunch of warning lights, and it's going to make it extremely difficult to drive. So to get it to an alignment shop, we got to get it as close as we possibly can. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the wheels back on it. I'm going to get it back down on the ground, and then I'm going to show you a little trick that you can do to get uh, the vehicle drivable so you can get it down to an alignment shop. Okay, so now we got her back on the ground and whew, and she looks good. You wanna see? Check this out. Oh yeah, that is just absolutely beautiful. All right guys, so here's the deal. Before we do anything, as far as adjusting the steering, we've gotta take it for a spin around the block real quick. It might be a little bit difficult because the steering wheel is going to be off and you're going to throw some warning lights. But the reason we need to do that is we need to get the suspension to settle down just a little bit and set into place before we make any adjustments. So let's take it around the block real quick. And then when we come back, I'm going to show you how to fix your alignment cheating a little bit before you get it to the shop. So as you're driving it, Make sure to try to go over some bumps if you can help it. Maybe hop a curb once or twice. The whole idea is we want this suspension to actually move. We could try swinging it just back and forth, get it to actually settle into place. If you hear a couple pops and a couple bangs, don't be alarmed. This, like I said, the suspension needs to settle into place. Now, one thing that I'm actually really impressed with. Uh, because I didn't actually do any adjustments yet, is the steering wheel is actually fairly straight already. It's a little off, but it's not nearly off as much as I thought it was going to be, or at least how it has been with some of the bigger lifts that we've done in the past. So, it actually drives shockingly smooth. This is actually really cool. All right. So fortunately, right around the corner from my house, which is basically my backyard, it's all desert. So in order to really get this suspension to settle into place, you can run over some humps real quick because this development is all brand new pavement and man, it's smooth. So let's see here. Bump one, 
Ooh, that was beautiful. Wow, what a difference having brand new shots and, and everything makes. Goodness gracious. Okay, so we're going to dive off road here. And there we go. Now let's get her to settle in. There we go. And I don't know if you can hear that, but there's a couple of those pops as this is actually settling into place. Beautiful. All right. So I'm going to turn around, head back to the garage. The steering wheel is only off by about 20 degrees, which is great. But I'm going to show you how to fix it so we can drive it into town and get the alignment done. And driving down the road, the steering wheel, although off center, is not off center eh, as much as I thought it would be. So let me show you how far off center it is. So you can see she dives down a little bit to the left there, and she's up a little bit on the right. So before we drive it to an alignment shop, in order to actually get the alignment set perfect with the new lift, straightening out the steering wheel would definitely be handy. So let me show you how to do that. All right, so we're going to come around to the front of the Jeep. We're going to leave it on the ground. We're not jacking it up. We're not doing any more of that. But we are going to get on the ground and get underneath the Jeep. And let me show you why. You ready? All right, from up underneath the Jeep, this is your steering gearbox. Gearbox comes down to a pitman arm. This is the start of your drag link. Your drag link goes all the way down to your front wheel. This guy is what we're going to adjust. We are going to loosen this airplane nut right here. And we're going to turn this slightly. I don't remember if it's clockwise or counterclockwise in order to straighten that steering wheel. This is all we're going to adjust. And this way, the steering wheel is straight and it's safer to drive down the road. Once we get the steering wheel back to straight, we're going to tighten this bolt back down and hold it in place. This is not a permanent fix for your alignment. Like I said, this is temporary to get you to the alignment shop so that you could actually get it um, aligned properly. But the reason we're only touching this and not the rest of the components, let me explain. All right, guys. So, like I said, I'm going to explain. Your drag link comes all the way down to your front wheel. This guy is your tie rod, runs from wheel to wheel. If you are using this video as a guide for your lift on a JK, a JL, or a JT Gladiator, this tie rod is one solid piece that runs from wheel to wheel. This is the guy that you adjust in order to control the toe on your alignment. If you are using this video as a guide on an older TJ, well, you've got a different steering system and a different setup on that guy. So that's a whole nother video. Anyways, the vehicle, when she put these tires on, was aligned appropriately. This tie rod was never removed to do the lift. And regardless of where this axle sits or how high the lift is, that dimension between the driver's side wheel and the passenger side wheel will never change. That tie rod should be perfect. But as the axle comes down, the drag link comes down. When that comes down, it wants to lengthen. Because it can't lengthen, instead what it does is it pulls on the steering wheel, and that's why the steering wheel becomes off-center. So by adjusting just the drag link, we can move that steering wheel back to straight, so that we can drive it in. Now, like I said, even though the alignment was just done, if you change anything in your suspension system, take it back to the alignment shop and have it realigned correctly so that you know 100% you're not going to unevenly wear your tires or have any shake um, or wobble issues going down the road. So let me get this adjusted real quick. Um, so that we can get this straightened out. That way we can go test this and make sure the suspension is working correctly. When you're trying to straighten the steering wheel out, it's good to have a buddy with you because you can't see the steering wheel while you're under the Jeep and you can't adjust the steering wheel while you're inside the Jeep. So it's helpful to have a friend.
far. So now we've got it all lifted, adjusted, tightened now, ready to go. Let's go back to where we first tested it out and see if there is any difference in the way this Jeep performs. So there you have it, folks. A two and a half inch lift makes all the difference in the world. And as you can see, over the stock suspension, she is far more capable now. On top of that, it's a smooth ride and it solved several problems that she probably didn't even know that she had. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that it was educational and I hope that it answered questions for you. If you have any other questions or there's something that I didn't cover, more than welcome to either put it down in the comments below or shoot me an email at yasmarproductions at gmail.com and I'll get to it just as quick as I can, I promise. In the meantime, folks, once again, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. And now we're ready to give Misty her Jeep back, and she is going to be overly excited. So in the meantime, folks, stay safe, happy Jeeping, and we will see you next time. Oh, yeah. That is just badass. So what do you think? Fantastic. A plus, 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 and another plus. <laughs> and that's not even a full flex. Yeah, <laughs> 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 <laughs>